That's crazy. Like I said, I don't want to be reincarnated. I want to be with the family that I have now. I'm happy with... They're the ones I belong with, in my opinion. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular dude. Where I do trailer reactions, I react to YouTube videos, I review YouTube channels, occasionally I'll review a movie, but really, I just do whatever the hell I want. Hello everybody and welcome to Gene's Reviews. Reviews from a regular dude. If you'd like to support my channel, check in the description below and check out my Teespring store. I have t-shirts, hoodies, coffee cups, tote bags, all kinds of different stuff. It's not required, but you know what? It really is appreciated. And also, I have a... You can check out my PayPal if you'd like to donate. Uh, right now, we're going to do two videos today. The first one we're going to check out is from a channel called Weird World. And this is two ghosts who visited their parents before being born reincarnation stories I find that kind of interesting I don't really want to be reincarnated when I go I want to be with my family that I have now I don't want to I don't want to be reincarnated so let's check this out the following are two amazing stories where a soul was able to send a message to their intended family by appearing in a dream or a vision telling them they will be shortly arriving the messages that they send to their future parents are called announcing dreams. Walter Miller, Michael Wright. In the 1960s, Walter Miller lived in a small town in Texas, and in high school, he was dating a young woman by the name of Catherine. Walter liked to draw and paint, and would often do drawings for Catherine. In the late 60s, after being together for three years, they planned to get engaged and then marry. One evening in the summer of 1967, Walter and his friend Henry Sullivan had been to a dance in a neighbouring town and were driving home from the dance when Walter fell asleep at the wheel, were in the car, ran off the road and crashed. Walter passed immediately after breaking his neck and Henry Sullivan was fortunate enough to survive with just a few scratches. Almost one year later in June of 1968, Catherine married a young man by the name of Frederick Wright. Catherine had not been married very long when Walter started to appear in her dreams, telling mm. her that he was not dead and would one day come back and draw pictures for her, as he'd previously done. Catherine believed the dream to be a genuine message from a late boyfriend, That's telling creepy. her that he would be reincarnating. Walter had a sister called Carol, and at the time of her dream was pregnant, so Catherine assumed that Walter would reincarnate as a child of Carol's, but that was not to be the case. A few years later, Catherine became pregnant with her first child and gave birth to a baby girl. Then in 1975, she had another child where she gave birth to a baby boy, who she named Michael. The thought that Walter could reincarnate as a son never entered her mind until ah. one day when Michael was only three years old, mentioned the name Carol Miller, who was Walter's sister. As if this was not enough of a message to shock Catherine, her son later gave a detailed account of the car accident that had cost Walter his life. Michael had told the story to a friend, where he told him that he was in a car with a friend that went off the side of the road, and then the car rolled over and over. He said he lost his life when his door flew open and was thrown out of the car. But that was not the last description that his son Michael would give after the car accident. We said that he remembered the glass in the car shattering and also later remembered being carried over a bridge. Michael was also able to name the town that had been coming from after the dance before driving on the highway and having the accident. As if that was not enough proof that Walter had reincarnated as a son, Michael also mentioned that he and his friend had stopped at a restroom on their way home and said that his friend's name was Sullivan and even quirky name what Henry Sullivan's nickname was. Michael was also able to tell them where Walter lived and where Henry Sullivan lived. Catherine knew that all of these facts were true regarding Walter's accident and Michael also described what happened after he died where the ambulance that was taking Walter's body away to the morgue had crossed over a bridge. Just okay, all of this, this just ain't right. 
how would you like to know that your fiance or ex-boyfriend gets in a car crash and gets killed and then you have a baby years later and it's him reincarnated as your son that's just wrong just as Michael had described it appears obvious that after Walter had lost his life he was able to observe his body being placed into the ambulance and being driven over the bridge as he was now in spirit it appears that Walter also had genuinely appeared in Catherine's dream telling her he would be coming back but he did not warn her that he would be coming back as her son Blanche Bautista in 1900 Okay, that has to be real because how could the child have all those memories? That's that's nuts. That's crazy. Nora Batista and her husband from Nida lived in Rome, where Signora gave birth to a baby girl that they named Blanche. At the time, Signora's husband from Nida was a captain in the Italian army and had a Swiss servant named Mary, who could only speak French. When Blanche was two years of age and ready for bed, Mary would sing her a French lullaby, and Blanche eventually learned the lyrics to the song. Unfortunately, Blanche passed away in 1902, when she was only two years of age, and Mary then left the family and returned home to Switzerland, no doubt shattered by the sad event. Three years later, and no doubt time had helped to heal some of her emotional wounds, Signora Battista was pregnant again, and when she was just three months pregnant, Signora Battista had a vision where she received a message that Blanche was returning to the family. It was August 1905, and at the time of the message, her husband, Flonita, was in the room with his wife when they were both lying in bed and fully awake. Suddenly, his wife told him that she'd seen a figure of their deceased daughter, Blanche, and the vision showed a happy child that spoke to Signora and said to her, Mama, I'm coming back, and then the figure disappeared. Six months later, in February 1906, Signora gave birth to a baby girl, of which they again called Blanche, no doubt keeping the name of their deceased child. Why give a baby a new name when, as seen in a vision, believed the previous child was returning? The reborn Blanche had the same features as the old Blanche. Wow. The parents needed any more proof that the deceased child returned was when, at the age of five, the new Blanche started singing the French lullaby that had been taught to her by their former French servant, Mary. See, lullaby that Mary had taught the old... How would she know that? It has to be real. Blanche had not been sung or heard for nine years, and five-year-old Blanche had not been around any French people or heard any French tunes in all of her five years. When her parents asked Blanche where she'd learnt the French lullaby, their child responded by saying, Nobody taught me, I just know it by myself and then continued to sing the lullaby that Mary had taught her in a previous incarnation. The case of Blanche Batista appears to show that people can reincarnate with the same family, and the absolute proof is when Blanche was able to sing a French lullaby that she had not been taught in a short five years, as the reborn Blanche and a physical resemblance was further proof that the child had transferred from one incarnation to another. That's crazy. Like I said, I don't want to be reincarnated. I want to be with the family that I have now. I'm happy with... They're the ones I belong with, in my opinion. Let's go on to the next video. Okay, this one's from Bad to the Bone Paranormal. And it's Panic Attack at Post Town Elementary School. So, I've never heard of this channel. Let's check it out. Um, a lot of you saw my video the other day when I had a complete panic attack. <laughs> I went live on Facebook thinking everybody would protect me and I wouldn't be alone. Like, how are you going to jump through a phone and save me? Yeah. Hi, Vincent. So, um, I'm going to show you all what scared the bejesus out of me and a little extra of what was going on around me at the time that I didn't know about until Daryl Wiseman, the owner of the school, showed me the video footage. 
um, he had to come and save me <laughs> from having a panic attack. I was frozen with fear. So I'm gonna play back just two parts of the video that I put on the other day. I'm fucking shaking. Whew. Pull it together, pull it together. Okay, is she there investigating or does she work there? Because if she's there investigating, she needs to find a different line of work if she gets that worked up and that scared about it, in my opinion. If it's her job, then I understand she's got to be there. I have never been so scared in my life. That was edited. Good morning, it's just me, Angelina. I'm not here to harm anybody. I'm just here to work today. Keep the school. Another edit. So if y'all see this door right here, you cannot open it. I'm trying and you can't open it. So I walk through this door. And as I walked in, we got right here, this door literally open. And you can only open it from the inside. Why, See I wonder. See how hard that was? And I'll show you guys one more time. If it's an operating elementary school, you think they would fix that to where you could get in and out? I can't open it from the outside. There's nobody here with me. It's pretty dark. It's not. I can't open it. I hope nobody makes fun of me because this is no fucking bullshit, man. Uh, Mom, I think that's you trying to call me. Just give me a second. I gotta get it together. Man, I'm freaking out, y'all. Freaking out. I don't know how or what's in here, but please, I'm not here to harm anybody. I'm here to help. They always say that. How, if they were there to harm, how? How can they harm? A spirit. And, and make the school better. And keep all the bad out. You, you say I'm really here with respect right or something like that instead. Y'all don't even know what to say right now. Oh shit. <laughs> I need an anxiety pill and I'm too afraid to even leave this room right now. She does seem like she's having problems know, with I'm it. A I believe her. Oh. 10.22 a.m. January 3rd. It's actually 9.22. I haven't set the clock back on my security. I wish they turned the camera. Here comes Angelina to go put wood in the boiler. Okay, she must work there. And she opens the door and closes it. Comes back open. She closes it again. Okay. And 109 opens. Like oh suction. Kind of freaks her out a little bit. A lot. A lot, yeah. And very slowly you walk out to the boiler thinking... What the hell just happened? Looking through the windows of the school. She goes over and she'll stand beside the boiler for about three minutes, I believe. I'm still scared. And then she comes back to the building. What's that call that you do? Huh? Yeah. The sign of the cross. Okay. 
shadow under the door. She opens the door. She comes over. And as soon as she grabs this door to close it, you can see something. She's hearing something. And right now, something touched her. Tries closing the door, it's not catching. Well, that could be a problem with the latch. There, there she got it, the latch. She tries to pull it again, it will not open. Now she goes to the restroom very cautiously. <laughs> Upstairs, you'll notice. A little shadow and it shuts the camera down, comes back and it shuts the camera down again, comes back. Huh. That happens and I go back down to keep going. And this is when Angelina comes back from the bathroom. In that hallway you really need to turn that camera, dude. I'm gonna double time until she comes back. So you like to sit away. There she is. Now here she touches the door, she feels something pat her on the back, and she runs <laughs> to the room. Huh. She is creeped That's out. <laughs> Let's see what this says. I was a non-believer in the paranormal and since my first visit, I have been a believer in spirits, ghosts, and the afterlife. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know whether I believe it or not, but I believe she believes. And I want to check out more from that channel. That's Bad to the Bone Paranormal. And that was Panic Attack at Post Town Elementary School. She was definitely having a panic attack, in my opinion. Now it's time for the joke of the day. The other day I left the store. I went down the street to my bus. The bus came, I got on, and I walked to the back. Sat down beside this beautiful blonde girl. I said, hello. She said, hello. I said, isn't it an amazing day? She said, well, I guess. I said, what do you mean you guess? She said, well, things haven't been going too good for me lately. I said, like what? She said, well, I can't tell you. I don't even know you. I said, well, sometimes it's good to tell your problems to a, a complete stranger. She said, well, I just came back from my analyst, and he's still unable to help me. I said, well, what's the problem? She paused and said, well, I'm a nymphomaniac, and I only get turned on by Jewish cowboys. Then she said, hello, my name's Diane. I said, hello, Diane. I'm Bucky Goldstein. Thank you, everybody. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, hashtag Mean Gene, all that fun stuff. And if you like this video, tell all your friends. Leave a comment down below. And if you didn't like it, then just shut up. And I will see you next time.